Well, we recently got to know that Samsung is trying to use the stacked battery technology inside the Galaxy S24 series, and that will actually provide a lot of improvements to the charging capabilities or even the battery capacity, raw capacity. But that's not only it. Now, many leakers actually say that the Galaxy S24 Ultra will actually retain the same four camera configuration as the predecessor, the Galaxy S23 Ultra, and some people are disappointed by that. But you have to keep in mind that we are talking about a prototype device even at this point. Many things could change before the final device's production. And there we have something interesting. The setup for the next year's Galaxy S24 Ultra is expected to include a 200 megapixel main camera, a 12 megapixel ultra wide angle camera, a 10 megapixel 10x periscope camera, and a 3x telephoto camera, but it's gonna be a 50 megapixel sensor. Now, we've already heard that there is going to be a slight bit of improvements in the 10x teleporter camera department, but maybe not in the resolution department. It's still going to be a 10 megapixel one, at least as of now we are hearing it. In the past, we've also heard that there are going to be a 3x to 5x jump, the teleporter camera, but rather than that, Samsung is actually implementing a 50 megapixel 3x camera. Now, more megapixels doesn't always mean it's better. But with the new generation technologies, Samsung will actually implement 4-in-1 pixel beating when using the 50 megapixel 3x teleporter camera. That technically means that you will be able to capture a 12.5 megapixel image instead of the current 10 megapixel 3x image. So it's either way win-win. But then why there is that much megapixel? What it will be doing? Well, think about it this way. From 3x to 10x zoom, Samsung will actually have to rely on the 3x 10 megapixel camera and the ISP of the chipset, all digital zoom. So if they implement a 50 megapixel 3x camera, then they can actually use a lot of megapixels to create much sharper 12.5 megapixel images even when you're zooming from 3x to all the way 10x. After that, it will be taken care by the 10 megapixel 10x periscope camera. Now you have to keep in mind that Samsung will actually have to balance things out when you're talking about a periscope camera. You can't actually have a 108 megapixel 10x periscope camera, at least as of now, because the whole periscope module actually takes up a lot of space inside the phone. So having a much bigger sensor or much more megapixels can create a lot of problems. But that doesn't mean we might not see improvements in there. Maybe a 12 megapixel 10x periscope camera, maybe in the future, or maybe with the S24 Ultra, but we will have to wait for more news to come in because we know that there are going to be improvements in that department. But the main camera, the 200 megapixel camera, is still going to be the Isocell HP2 sensor that was launched with the S23 Ultra. So it's a fairly new sensor. And this is the same sensor that will be used inside the S25 Ultra as well. We are hearing that. And that's not bad, considering this sensor is actually made specifically for Samsung Galaxy devices. And that also means that Samsung will have to use this sensor for future generations of the Galaxy S Ultra models to fully utilize the sensor by improving the ISP and the software over time. Just like what they did with the 108 megapixel sensor. Developing another 200 megapixel camera sensor will make the cost of the phone way more than what it will be with the same 200 megapixel Isocell HP2 sensor just because of the R&D cost. So yeah, we will have to wait for Samsung to develop a 1-inch sensor with higher megapixel count to be featured inside any Galaxy S Ultra models in the future, but not right now. But the disappointing part is actually in the ultra wide angle department. It's still going to be a 12 megapixel camera, at least as of now we are hearing that. And it's a 1 over 2.55 inch sensor, which is not the best thing when you think about a Samsung Galaxy S Ultra model. We're also hearing that the Samsung Galaxy S24 series might also come with an Exynos 2400 variant, but only for certain markets. And talking about the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, which will come to certain markets like US and China, my smart price has actually found out the Geekbench listing of it. Well, the single core test actually shows 2,233 points, while the multi core test is actually showing about 6,661 points. That's, that's a lot. So this is still a prototype sample for sure. So looking at the single core and the multi-core test of the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, we can totally see how improved chipset it is over the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 for Galaxy, which is already a great chip. So surely I will let you guys know anything more I get to know about the Galaxy S24, S24 Plus or the S24 Ultra. Let me know your thoughts about the camera sensor changes of the Galaxy S24 Ultra. And yes, if you want, you can get some crazy cool wallpapers up on my website, link down below.
Until the next one, bye and take care.